Hello and welcome to the latest installment in the Guns and Gear Review series. Now, um, if you follow my channel for any amount of time and you've seen my reviews, they know, you know that they take place outside and on the ground. Um, I mostly filmed outside for lighting. That was pretty much the main reason I did it. Uh, there was a lot of sound outside and I've always wanted to transition to the inside of the house, but I just didn't have the best lighting in the world. But uh, I just turned up the exposure on my iPhone and I figured it looked pretty good with the, the wood table background. It's pretty nice. But uh, I have been getting a lot of subscribers recently. I am stoked. I'm so happy. I've never gotten so many subs so quickly before. And uh, if you're watching this video, welcome to the channel. Uh, this is going to be my first review indoors and uh, it's over the Ares Amoeba Honey Badger. This is a really good gun. I've used it about twice now. I want to use it just one more time and then I'm going to sell it. Uh, the last time I use it, hopefully I'll have the bottom rail this time so I can have a foregrip or something. But uh, this is going to be the full length detailed review on the Ares Amoeba Honey Badger. It is a like an M4 platform, pretty small gun with a retracting stock. So it has a collapsible stock. And um, the real one has like uh, some kind of integrated suppressed suppressor with hand stops in the front for kind of like a Chris Costa C-clamp kind of thing. And um, it's a really nice AEG. It's pretty innovative in the gearbox as well in the in the trigger trigger system. So no more uh, micro switches like uh, companies like to do. Instead of that, Ares put a like a FCC unit or micro switch. Um, I wouldn't call it a uh, MOSFET or anything, but um, the gun does perform and shoot very well and really reliably. Making the video look cool, I have a non-working EMAG. Just looks the best with this gun. The EMAG. And then I also have an Avengers Micro T1 Red Dot Quick Detach, which just looks perfect with this gun. Put it about here. It is a tight fit, like how tight I gotta push this down like that's how tight the rail is with this sight there we go the real honey badger is from a company called AAC it is a integrally suppressed so built-in suppressor that shoots I think a 300 blackout but you could still use regular subsonic ammo in this gun the real one at least but um, the airsoft one of course shoots six millimeter BBs and uh, lately I've been using these elite force uh, BBs they work pretty good. I do not I do not agree with the high price tag, but uh, these are quality BBs So I'm getting my specifications from Evike. They say that the body is built out of nylon fiber and it's reinforced polymer uh, It's got 6063 CNC aluminum handguard and two Picatinny rails which mine did not come with the gun should come with I think a small upper rail a longer bottom rail and two backup plastic sights which the guy who sold it to me said that they broke so um, I did get this gun used from a teammate for only 60 bucks didn't have a hop up an inner barrel but I added a, uh, I think it's a JG um, like a package with the hop up the inner barrel and the bucking all in one for 15 bucks so this gun overall with the the whole thing only cost me about $75 so EVEC states that uh, well, pretty much this entire section here is aluminum except for these hand stops. So the inner barrel, well, of course, the inner barrel is aluminum or brass, I think. But um, the outer barrel, the integrated suppressor, and the rail is made of the CNC aluminum. The length of the gun is 630 millimeters, probably with the I assume the stock collapsed. So 630 millimeters, and then 735 with the stock fully extended. The weight is 2,400 grams. Um, the inner barrel is a length of 300 millimeters or 6.3 millimeters in diameter. So uh, your BBs are 6 millimeter and your diameter in the inner barrel is 6.3 millimeters, so very tight bore barrel. But of course, mine has the, uh, the replacement JG barrel. The performance in the range is still pretty good on this gun either way. Um, the original mag capacity, so it had a uh, Ares magazine, which was pretty cool. It had like a built-in like mag pool thing, which was pretty neato, but uh, it was not included with this. Uh, the original muzzle velocity, and it should be the same, is 360 to 400 measured with .20s, which is what I'm using. So I did shoot a guy in the dick. Hit! Hit! You shot me in the throat. Yeah, it's a dick 
and it hurt a lot for him, so I'm guessing the gun is around 400 FPS on the field. Evike says that the threat direction is 14 millimeter negative, which obviously isn't true because this gun does not have any threads. It just has this uh, like barrel thing plug made out of plastic. It used to be painted orange, but I painted it black. Maybe they mean like um, back here. I'm not sure if you can remove the suppressor or not. I'm really not sure about that. The gearbox is a version 2, full metal and fully upgradable. I'm going to put some pictures of what the inside of the gearbox looks like. Phenomenal gearbox. Rate of fire and trigger response is excellent. It is one of the best performing AGs I've ever used. Um, it is definitely top tier performance. Um, just a really good gun overall. Like if you need a good gun for airsoft, this is the one. And if you need something small for CQB and all that. It has a high torque, long tight motor, which is pretty good with the rate of fire and everything. You can get a burst programmable unit, which I think goes into the little FCC thing, so you can add in a burst unit for this gun. Uh, recommended battery is a 7.4 volt small PQ brick lipo, whatever. Um, what I use is this, it is a 11.1 volt, 1000 milliamp Tenergy battery, and it's got a, it's on Tamiya, which the gun is also on Tamiya. Um, it works really well, but I have to put electrical tape around this in order to keep the battery in because the battery compartment is really, really small. So that is everything that Evike has to say about this gun. Um, I'm going to quickly go over features and controls. It's basic M4 stuff. I mean, the only thing that's different, of course, is your two push buttons here to extend the stock, your uh, battery compartment, which we'll take a bigger, or which we'll take a closer look at. Um, you got a regular dust cover and a charging handle, so basic M4 stuff. You have a uh, kind of enhanced and large magazine release, so you, it's really easy to press the button and get any stuck mags out or anything. So big button here. Um, you have your standard um, M4 type selector switch, really good on the click, really uh, well made. You have standard trigger, kind of a short pull, and you can hear a little click. That is because it doesn't have um, what's it called. Um, trigger contacts and I prefer the micro switches from Aries so long as they don't um, break and you can pro you can prolong the life of a micro switch or pretty much any trigger contacts any trigger stuff in airsoft with a, a MOSFET but I think the FCC kind of uh, prolongs the life of it um, of course you got a 20 millimeter spec Picatinny rail on the top which I've mounted the red dot to um, the two rails, of course, you can put uh, any new front sights, you can remove these uh, hand stops. And then you can have a lower rail, which I do hope to get before this gun goes away. I am going to sell this gun. So if you make me a good offer, I'll sell it to you over eBay or something. But honestly, probably think about selling this locally. The magwell is a little tight. You got like to gotta force them in there. Not too bad. It's not like ridiculous. You're not going to break nothing. Um, other than that, the gun has, I believe to this day, like I'm still not sure, I believe that these uh, ovals are M-lock and then the holes are all threaded for the rails, so you can move the rails on the sides, you know, or on the bottom, the top, or, you know, you can move the rails wherever you want on this gun, pretty much. So let's take a look at trademarks. Um, there's nothing, oh well, there is actually. The only trademark up front is on the hand stops. You have the Amoeba logo and some numbers on these hand stops, really nicely done. These are made of polymer. And uh, well, we'll go into built materials when we're done here, but we have the Aries logo and Amoeba and some fake, fake serial number and realistic markings for the caliber. It does not say 300 black on anything, but uh, I think the real one still takes the 5.56 anyway, so it doesn't matter. These are markings, so you have your safe, semi, and full auto markings. On the grip, you have some kind of uh, numbers and the Aries logo, of course. Aries logo on the pistol grip. Uh, the Aries name and some more numbers on the bottom of the pistol grip. And then other than that, you have a repeat on this side. So those are the only trademarks on the gun. All right, going from front to back, and let me just collapse the stock here. It's getting in my way a bit. But uh, going from the front to back, let's review the entire gun. Um, in the front you have the big blaze orange uh, muzzle cap thing that goes on the end of the suppressor. Uh, the orange tip just really irked me so I painted it black. The paint is just not the best quality, that crappy Walmart paint. 
Um, the tip is plastic, and then the suppressor itself is aluminum. The whole handguard is aluminum, like mentioned, so the, pretty much the whole thing is aluminum. But the hand stops are a really tough uh, polycarbonate. They are serrated up top here, of course. So I'm um, holding it like with your thumb here and your other hand here, do kind of like a grip like that. It's really comfortable and it really helps with pointing the weapon. And uh, I did it a lot during the gameplay. Overall, the, the entire handguard is pretty comfortable to hold. So you can get a good wrap around it. It's not too thick or nothing. So you can wrap your whole hand around it, get it really steady. And um, yeah, it's just overall really comfortable. And uh, the construction on the front of the gun is really solid. Nothing moves or rattles or nothing. It is just a... Uh, here. Any sound that's coming from is probably from the fake bolt release. But otherwise, like... No sound coming from this gun. Really well built. Really solid piece. I'm sure you can remove it. There is a screw here. Uh, otherwise, to take this off, I'm pretty sure it's just a matter of this pin. And, um... Probably gotta open up the inside and take it apart. So the paint job is really nice. Uh, I don't really see much. I don't really see any scratching besides in the threaded holes. So otherwise, this paint is pretty good and it's gonna resist pretty much all of your uh, combat, all your combat wear. So now we're at the body here of the amoeba. Um, the entire body is made out of the reinforced nylon fiber. Um, it's a bit flexible in places. Like if you were to disassemble the upper receiver. Which um, it's a little flexible, like you could squeeze you could squeeze this section here, and that's kind of how you take it off. Like it's gotta flex out of the way of the gearbox in order to come off or actually slide forward. So the polymer is a bit on the flexible side. Whether or not it's gonna break, but um yeah, the, the polymer build quality, the only way you can really break this is if you ran it over with like a truck, like directly over the middle of the gun. Otherwise, uh, it's pretty robust. There's nothing you can do to it in Airsoft to break the body. So, of course, we got to look at our controls. But the selector switch is really crisp, really loud and click, and it stays in position. So you're not going to have any trouble. You're not going to, like, knock it into that. Um, it's a really good throw on the selector switch. Really easy. I like it a lot. Um, trigger pull, of course, you can hear the micro switch or the, the FCC. Really short trigger pull. The pistol grip, I love the pistol grip a lot. Really comfortable, really ergonomic, better than a standard M4 grip. You have some, uh, well, first of all, it's polycarbonate. And uh, it's serrated along the front, got like a Glock style um, pistol grip texturing on the sides, which is really aggressive and feels really nice. Good grip on the gun. Uh, an Ares logo, and then kind of like Magpul design, the way the bottom would come out and it's for your motor and there's your adjustment height i have had trouble with the adjustment height coming all the way out during gameplay and the gun would stop working um i recommend just a little bit of loctite to keep the screw from falling out or just unscrewing itself with the a lot of shooting um it is vented though so your motor will cool down nicely well i've never had a motor get too hot on the field which is good um it is like an m4 but the body has some uh slight differences in its shape like um, here, this little section here for the bolt release, and then the section for the stock to go into, and the enhanced like trigger guard with some serrations on it. Um, it is a really nice M4 mock-up. I mean, it's a really nice um, M4 type weapon. As you can see on this side, the dust cover and the bolt opens up and exposes the wheel, the dial-based hop-up. From the JG which is pretty much the same so this gun takes standard version 2 M4 type and uh, standard version 2 M4 type um, hop-ups so um the ejection port and the bolt is a little skinnier than a standard M4 I don't know if this is uh like the real amoeba I mean the real honey badger but um it looks pretty nice so um all the gray parts on the rifle are made of metal so the the black bolt is metal, the dust cover is full metal, the magazine release, the stock, the, the charging handle, the selector switch, the this side of the magazine release, the trigger, and the fake bolt release are all made of aluminum. The fake bolt release doesn't do anything, it doesn't lock the gun, but it does kind of just move around. So you can still pretend like kind of in a movie or something, movie prop, you can hit that. Um, also, the very front of the magwell is serrated. 
is serrated, so if you have a magazine and you can hold the weapon here quite comfortably. So in the back, um, this whole thing is sort of like a cheek rest, but um, I guess my lungs, I, I guess I'm a little tall, so I, my cheek ends up when shouldering the rifle around here pretty much, and you'll see that in the shooting test. Um, one sling on the rifle, and it's just a hole underneath the stock. In the back with the stock opened, you can see your battery compartment. This little black thing here is like spring-loaded thing so that the stock itself will pop out when uh, you release it. The two buttons on the side for opening the stock are polycarbonate. And to access your battery compartment, there's a small tab under here that you depress and then pull out. So you can take this thing off and that's just the cover. And then you have your battery compartment. Now the battery compartment on this thing is really small. It is pretty small. Um, it has a Tamiya connector with some really good wiring. I have accidentally put the pistol grip back on during disassembly and a wire was sticking out right here and I tightened the screws and the wire did not rip. So really good wiring from Aries. Not going to have any problems with uh, ripped wires or crimping. You can see them. They're silver. Pretty good wires on this gun. So I use this battery with pretty much all of my guns now. I never run nickel hydrate no more. I really like lipos. They're like AEGs on steroids. But uh, it will not fit. Like the cover will not cover it. Too many wires in the way. So I recommend a 7.4 volt or a custom small type. Like a buffer tube battery. Nothing too long because it's got to fit in there. So the cap just goes right back in. And it will close the battery compartment. So this is the stock. Um, it's pretty basic. Just two metal sticks. And then this plastic serrated butt pad. Decently comfortable and steady. It does move a tad bit. But um, it's really nothing. Once you're shouldering the weapon, shooting it, it doesn't matter. It's a pretty steady platform. Taking this gun apart is not that difficult. Um, a slightly experienced tech can do this. But uh, it might be a little difficult for beginners. It's kind of easy in my honest opinion, but it does require moving a lot of parts in order to get to the gearbox itself. You punch out these two pins, then you would take off the, you, will, you open up the battery compartment. Okay, and on the inside there is a screw in the very back, which is connected to the gearbox. That also has to be removed. Once that's been removed, the entire upper along with the barrel will slide forward with the gearbox in the bottom. Then you would disassemble the pistol grip and the motor and take that all off. Then from there you would remove this pin right here and you would also remove the magazine release. From there, the gearbox will come out. Let's take a look at magazine compatibility. Um, for this test you've obviously seen that the E-mags will fit in the gun. But uh, let's try out some other magazines. So here I have a standard uh, mid cap. Whether or not they feed, I guess we'll get into that in the shooting test. So, really nice fit, as you can see. Um, this one did not require too much force to get it in, but obviously the mid caps fit. Uh, the only mags that won't fit pretty much will be um, the VFC magazines, because they have those little bumps. These plastic mid caps, really, really tough to get in the gun, but they will fit and feed. Really tough to get out as well. Like, look at this. Damn. And then the last is the standard, well this isn't standard, this is kind of an ancient, uh, what is it, high cap. Fits pretty well. So this has been my first indoor review. Uh, I just really liked the way that night vision collection video looked on video, so I figured I'd do all the reviews indoors. Um, really robust rifle overall. Uh, I would recommend it if you want a PDW length carbine. Um, yeah, I think this is about... Uh, I call it a PDW because of the size overall. It's really small, really small weapon. Um, definitely recommend for CQB. I have used it in both CQB fields and town field. It does pretty well in both. The things I like the most about the rifle, obviously the, the whole front. Love the front. Um, I just wish it would have had a metal body and the same coat, the same paint as this, only on the body itself. That would be pretty nice because I'm pretty sure the real one is made of metal. Uh, other than that, bigger battery compartment. Uh, other than that, of course, uh, I just wish it had the backup sights and the rails, of course. But if you buy this gun brand new, you will get those. Uh, this has been the review of the Ares Omiba Honey Badger. Uh, really nice gun. 
Uh, kind of worth the money. I don't ever spend that much money in airsoft guns. Three hundred dollars is a bit much. I'm pretty sure these have come down in price though. But uh, yeah, that's the end of the review. Um, we're gonna do a shooting test and see how this gun does with the JG barrel and JG uh, hop up. Um, it's pretty good. It's uh, it's no slouch. Oh, what was I thinking? It's so hot out here. But uh, we just got our 11.1 .1 in the stock. And we have .20 in the gun. Then I entered the red dot. And uh, I think my, my hop is still set. So uh, here's semi. Come on, why can't I hit this can? There we go. The, the battery might be wearing out. I did feel this battery, so. Yep. 